On September 23, 2017, OSHA began enforcing new stricter limits on respirable crystalline silica. The new rule affects all concrete operators who perform surface prep, polishing, drilling, or cutting in concrete. The permissible exposure limit, or PEL, went from 250 micrograms over an 8-hour shift down to just 50 micrograms. So how much dust are we talking about? 50 micrograms is about the size of Lincoln's forehead on a penny. It's a very small amount of dust, but it's extremely dangerous. Respirable crystalline silica causes a lot of serious health problems, so it's important to take proper precautions to protect yourself and your crew. Now, you might think that all you need to do is wear a respirator while you work, but it's not that simple. OSHA's rule specifies that employers must first implement engineering controls to reduce their employees' exposure to respirable crystalline silica. Engineering controls include using water while grinding or cutting to limit airborne dust, using an appropriate dust shroud, using the right size dust collector with at least 99% air filtration and an internal filter cleaning mechanism, and lastly, implementing correct housekeeping procedures. This includes using a HEPA-filtered vacuum or wet sweeping instead of a dry broom or air compressor to remove dust. When these types of engineering controls aren't enough to reduce workers' exposure below the permissible limit, then respiratory protection must be provided. Most businesses will follow the dust control methods listed on Table 1 of the standard. Table 1 lists out several common construction activities that generate respirable crystalline silica and the equipment and respiratory protection you need to minimize exposure. So all you need to do is check the table to see which level of respiratory protection you need. If you're not following Table 1 on the standard and are using your own alternative exposure control methods, then you must provide appropriate respiratory protection any time exposures exceed the permissible limit. But again, for most businesses, Table 1 is the easiest and least expensive way to comply with the standard. You'll notice that the respiratory protection sections on Table 1 refer to something called APF. APF stands for Assigned Protection Factor, which is the level of protection that a respirator is expected to provide. The higher the number, the stronger the protection. You may be surprised to find that most activities listed on Table 1 either don't require a respirator at all, or they only require an APF-10 respirator. Examples of respirators with an APF-10 rating include disposable half-face dust masks and reusable half-face dust masks with the P100 pancake filter. The only activity for which a stronger respirator is needed is tuck pointing, or when a handheld grinder is used for mortar removal. Workers who will be performing that activity for more than four hours should wear a respirator with at least an APF25 rating. Examples of respirators with an APF25 or greater rating include full-face reusable dust masks with a P100 pancake filter. If any worker is required to wear a respirator for 30 or more days per year, that worker must be provided with medical exams every three years. The medical exam should include chest x-rays and lung function tests. It's important to note that even if the worker only wears a respirator for a few minutes, it still counts as a full day. Jamdon has a full selection of dust masks, respirators, and filters for every application. Our experts can help you select the right respiratory protection for the job. Plus, we can help guide you through the standard to ensure your job sites are safe and compliant. For more information, visit www.johndon.com slash silica or call 800-556-6366 to speak with a concrete specialist today.